All right. So uh, 4.2, page 176, talking about reflections today. Okay. Yesterday we talked about translations, just sliding or moving from one point to another. Now we're talking about reflections. We know reflections. We've dealt with reflections before in our lives. Uh, reflection is just uh, a mirror image, right? So it's taking one point and reflecting it over or flipping it over a line, which we call the line of reflection. Okay, so we are reflecting. Now, one thing to point out is just because it kind of looks like a reflection doesn't mean that it actually is. Okay, it's a very technical, uh, specific thing to be a reflection. And so, for it to be a reflection, it needs to be the same distance away. From the line of reflection. And if you were to connect your pre image to your image, that line should be perpendicular to that line of reflection. So that's going to help us determine later on are things reflections or not. For example, right, if I have this point right there, if I wanted to reflect it, what I would do is I would make this perpendicular. And I would measure the distance here, the distance here, and there's our new point. There's our reflection. Okay, so it has to follow that rule of being perpendicular and being equidistant from the line of reflection. Okay, if it doesn't follow that, it is not truly a reflection. So just be careful of that. The other one that they're showing here, if you have a point that's on the line of reflection, it's going to stay on the line of reflection in the exact same spot. Right, no difference. Okay, so we've got reflections, and we're going to do kind of the same thing that we did uh, with translations. We're going to deal a lot in the coordinate plane. Okay, they're going to give us specific points, and we're going to have to reflect them over different things. So we're going to look first at a specific type of question that you're going to see tonight. You're going to see it on the test, on the quiz. Okay, this is what we're looking at here. So they give us the original three points. And they tell us that we're going to reflect this over the line y is equal to one. Okay, so we're reflecting over the line y is equal to one. So what we could do is we could graph it out to visualize it. So I'm going to graph it out just so we can visualize it so we can see exactly what's going on when we reflect over this line. So if I go to create my graph and I'm going to go uh, one comma three, so that's A, five two is B, two one is C. So there's our triangle. Okay. So now it's telling us to reflect over the line Y is equal to one. Where is that line Y is equal to one? What is that line? That is not the y-axis. Oh. Where y equals one. It's the line where y is going to equal one. And that's going to be that horizontal line right there. So that's the line that we are reflecting. It's the line where y is equal to one. Okay, so we are going to reflect over that. So we're going to take anything that's on above it and we're going to make it below it. Okay, so if we look. At our point, C is on that line of reflection. We said that's just going to stay on the line of reflection. Okay, so C is going to be the same place as C prime, which is right there. B is one away from the line, so it comes down one more. There's B prime. A is two away from the line, so down two more gives us that A prime. So there is our reflection over that line. Why is it one? Okay. So Sure, if we graph it, we can kind of logic our way through it and count and get it to the other side. I want to be able to do that without having to graph it, okay? Saving some time. So if we look at our new ordered pairs, our new ordered pairs here, A prime was one, negative one. B prime ended up being five comma zero. And C prime ended up being the same thing. So if you look at those three points and the three original points and the fact that y is equal to one, why don't you talk first and actually, what do you notice about this pattern that might help us move forward? Okay. 
the x value is the same. Yeah. And the y is 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 the y I thought it was like Gatorade soda. I'm sorry. Rick, so what are we doing? How could we do this without a graph? How could we do this without a graph? Evan? Okay, so I see what you're doing. You said y is one, so you subtract it. You got two. You times that by two, and then you subtracted it from the original. Okay, that'll work. Okay. Right. Try. Yeah, it's pretty much like the midpoint problem, right? Like those midpoint problems where I gave you the endpoint and the midpoint, and we had to find the other endpoint. Or whatever you did to get to the middle, you got to do again. It's the same idea here, where we know the midpoint. Okay, the midpoint is our reflection. That's when y is one. So if I subtract it two here, subtract two more. You get down to negative one. It's the same thing that Advic was saying. It's just without having to go back to the original. Here I subtracted one to get to that line of reflection, subtract one more, get to zero. See, of course, stays the same. Okay, so that's where we're what we're looking at. The x value stayed the exact same because we're just moving up and down. The x value stayed the same. The y is whatever I did to get to that line of reflection, do it again to get to the other side. I will tell you right now, this is the type of problem that people get wrong more than anything else from the second. Because they forget about this. They forget about what we did. Because everything else that we're going to do has nice and even, nice, neat rules that you're going to follow. This doesn't have a necessarily a rule that's spelled out. So we just need to be able to do it. Okay. Whatever you did to get there, do it to the other. So keeping that in mind, I want you to now reflect it over x is equal to three. This is different. You should reflect over x is equal to three and see if we can come up with those three new order pairs. Yeah. If you haven't talked to somebody about it yet, please do so. <laughs> C prime in four one. Four. So now that we're reflecting over x is equal to the number, that's a vertical line. 
my Y values are going to stay the same. And I do that with my axis, right? Find the halfway, I'm going to three, add two more. I'm subtracting two, subtract two more, adding one, add one more. Good. Any questions on those? Notice that when we do that, right, we're going to end up something like that. Okay, and that is a reflection, even though it's on itself, it's still a reflection over that line. A lot of times we run into, we think reflecting has to be the whole figures over here and then the whole figures over here. We can reflect on itself, okay? It just means whatever's on the left is now on the right. Whatever's on the right, now on the left. All right, so now the rules, because I told you we we're going to come across some rules here. We're gonna to wanna to copy this stuff down. We don't need to write it all, okay? Uh, let's be very specific about what we're gonna copy down. The four different things that we're going to reflect over, four different lines that we're going to reflect over here are the x-axis, y-axis, y is equal to x, and y is equal to negative x. That line y is equal to x, that's that. Diagonal line. That's the line y is equal to x. Y is equal to negative x is just the negative version of it going down. So those are the four different lines that we're going to reflect over. And we can write these as uh, rules and arrow notation. It's basically what it is. We're saying a b is going to become a comma negative b. So in arrow notation, that would be a b becomes a negative b. And so we can kind of create that. That's what I would write down would be what's underlined. So the line that we're reflecting over and then that rule and arrow notation that is going to follow. So I'm going to give you a minute, copy that stuff down. Make sure that we have all four of them. Make sure we have that correctly. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to follow those rules, okay? And so we kind of understand it, right? Whatever this value is, it's going to be there, just negative, right? That's kind of what we're looking at. I want you to start with the point three, two, and I want you to do all four of these. So where would that point end up if I reflected over the X or the Y or that line or that one? Okay, so we're getting four different word pairs here. Okay, so if I reflect that over the x axis, what point is that going to become? If I take 3, 2, and I put it over the x axis, take 3, negative 2. So all we're doing there, the x stays the same, and the b becomes, or, or the y value becomes the opposite. So this becomes 3, negative 2. If this was already a negative, then it would become a positive, right? It's just the opposite. So that's 3, negative 2. If I look, 3, negative 2 is going to be down here. That is reflecting over that x-axis. 
Okay, how about our next one, the Y axis? Evan? All right, negative three, two. Negative three, two would be right here. That's a reflection over the Y axis. Okay, good. And that one, the Y stays the same, the X changes. Okay, how about the line Y is equal to X? So the next quarter pair. So that one would be correct. Two comma three. Okay. There we're just switching the X and the Y. So two comma three is gonna be that point right there. And remember, we're reflecting over this line now. So it is a reflection over that line. Okay, we're just switching the X and the Y value there. And then the last one, of course, we're gonna switch and make a negative, sort of like a contrapositive. Gives us negative two, negative three, which is down here, which would be a reflection over that line. Okay. So we gotta know those rules. Uh, they're not on the worksheet. Okay, this is just something you need to learn, you need to memorize. Uh, and individually, not difficult, right? But you're gonna have these four, and then on Monday, we're gonna have three more that are just like it for rotation. Okay, so it is gonna take some studying before Wednesday so that we know when we see one of these on the quiz, we know exactly uh, what we're supposed to do. Okay, that's the tricky part is when, when it all comes together. They're all mixed up. Okay, so just be careful on that. Uh, if you forget, let's say we get to Wednesday, we get to that quiz, and this just flies out of our mind. You can't remember. You can't remember which one's which. What up? Graph it out, right? Sketch it out and see does that make sense? Was this actually a reflection over y is equal to negative x? Or did I end up up here? Okay, make sure that it makes sense visually. If you can't remember or you are, are unsure, okay. use that as a resource for you, that visualization. Okay. Did you have questions on those rules? No? Okay. The next thing we're talking about, okay, we saw this yesterday, uh, where we talked about rigid motions, just a reflection, it is a rigid motion. We're not changing the size, we're not changing the shape. All right, we're just changing the location of it. So it is the original motion. And then we're going to get into transformations or composition of, tran of transformations. One in particular that we're going to talk about is a glide reflection. Okay, glide reflection. And this is one of our vocab words, make sure we know it. A glide reflection is a composition. That consists of a translation followed by a reflection. But it's not any translation followed by any reflection. It needs to be a translation that's going along the line that you're about to reflect over. So we're going to translate it along this line, parallel to that line, and then reflect it over. That's what makes it a glide reflection, is when we go along that same line and then reflect it. We're not translating out here and then reflecting it. That's not a glide reflection. Okay, it's got to go parallel to the line and then reflect over. So how we're going to solve these exactly like what we did yesterday with our two translations, where you just do the first one and then from that you do the second, the same idea. Okay, so they give us the order of pairs, they ask us to translate it, and then they ask us to reflect. Why don't you go ahead and find those points. Please find out where A double prime, B double prime, C double prime is going to be. Translate first, then the part.
Right. So that's what we're looking at here. Oh, you changed it. So all the x's first. And negative two, negative six, negative five for x values. Y values stay the same. But then when we reflect over the x, remember that's reflecting over the x, that's reflecting up and down. So the only thing that's going to change is the y value. So the x value is going to stay the same now. And we got to switch the y values to the negatives. All right, so that's what we're looking at here. And if we visualize it, okay, we'll see that wide reflection where we translate it straight left and then we reflect it down. Okay. Always just double check, does it make sense? Okay, visually, would it make sense if I switch the y values or switch the x values or whatever? All right. Any questions so far? Well, one last thing to look at here. Last thing we got to look at, along with uh, reflection, comes symmetry. Okay, and this is going to be the symmetry that you know. On Monday, we're going to get into symmetry, a new type of symmetry that we haven't dealt with. But this is our normal symmetry, right? Where you draw a line and it looks the same on both sides. It's symmetrical. Right, that's what we know. Uh, that line that we draw is called the line of symmetry, right? Well, what they're going to ask, they're going to ask, does it have line symmetry? And if it does, how many lines does it have? So I want you to talk to the person next to you for A, B, and C here for these figures. How many different lines can we draw to make these symmetrical, where you draw the line and it's the same on both sides? Okay, talk to somebody about it. Let's talk. So one, one, one. A hexagon has like 12. A hexagon has 1, 2, 4, 6, 12, 5, 6 pairs. No, 12 pairs. No, yeah, 12 pairs. Look at 4, 5, 6. Oh, I'm looking at. Oh, wait, no, it is six. Yeah, but you still got it wrong. No, yeah, you didn't do the middle ones. There are only three. So there is six. So you're so no. good. Wait, are we looking for parallel? Lines of symmetry, oh, not like Yeah, so like one, two, three, four. So we're going to get like six lines, three pairs. No, I just screwed up. So I'm going to one, two, three, four, five, six. Why did I say six pairs? Yeah, right. the parallel game is next. Here we go. So, Regina, what about the trapezoid? How many different lines of symmetry are we going to have here? There's one. One. That is it. There's one. Straight up and down. Okay, that's the only way that we can split this exactly in half. What'd you do? We split the same on both, both, uh, both sides. Okay. If I try to split it here, bottom finger on the top it doesn't work, right? Can't do diagonal here. That's going to How about for a regular hexagon here? Ava? Six. Six. It is six. Okay. Because we can cut through each vertex. Okay. If we draw it through the vertex, we know that that's the same on both sides. And we can do that two other times here. Kind of like that actually went through the vertex. Okay, so there's three. And then I can also cut it down the middle. All right, and the two halves are going to be the same. So I can do that there, there, and there. We've got six. So if you have what's called a regular, we haven't talked about it yet, but a regular polygon where all the sides are the same length, all the angles are the same, everything's the same. However many uh, points they have, that's how many lines of symmetry we have. We got six points in the hexagon, we get six lines of symmetry. How about a parallelogram? None. Yeah, we have none. A lot of times people say one here because they want to be able to draw in that line and have it be symmetrical. But if you go back to what we talked about at the very start with our reflection, if I'm going to reflect this point, it's not going to end up here. Right? If I reflect that point, I got to make that perpendicular. That's going to end out up here. Okay, so it's not a reflection, so it's not symmetrical. So our answer would be zero for that. All right, so let's get three more, and then we're good. Double check. Okay, same thing. Tell the person next to you. 
Do diagonal just like we couldn't on the parallelogram. If we did diagonal, then this point would reflect up here, not up here. Okay, just be careful on that. How about for a pentagon? How many sides or how many uh, lines? One. Five. 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 <laughs> and we, we can cut straight down the middle, but then if you turn and you look at it sideways, we can cut straight through that middle. And those two are going to be the same. I can cut through that. I can cut there. I can cut there. So we're going to have five. Like I said, if it's a regular figure, however many. Vertices it has, that's how many lines we're gonna have. Oops. How about isosceles triangle here? One. How many? One. 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 Just straight up and down. That's it. Does every triangle have a line of symmetry? No. No. Right? You draw it like that, there's no line of symmetry. Right. I beg. Just okay. Good. Any questions about it? Okay, we have five words to have down for tomorrow or for Monday. Please do so on our reflections or rotations. Okay.